Hi and welcome back to Free Science Lessons. By the end of this video, you should be able to describe what's meant by biodiversity. This includes habitat biodiversity, species biodiversity, and genetic biodiversity. Okay, I'm showing you here a tropical rainforest in Mexico and the Arctic off the coast of Norway. Now, tropical rainforests are extremely rich in living organisms, including plants, animals, fungi, and microorganisms. Scientists call the populations of living organisms in a habitat the community. In contrast, the Arctic has a relatively small range of living organisms. Now, the variety of living organisms that we find in a region is called the biodiversity. So, rainforests have a rich biodiversity, whereas the Arctic has a relatively low biodiversity. Now, all of the living organisms in a habitat depend on each other, so it's important that human activity does not have a negative effect on biodiversity. We can assess the degree of biodiversity at three levels. These are habitat biodiversity, which is also called ecosystem biodiversity, species biodiversity, and genetic biodiversity. We're going to start with habitat or ecosystem biodiversity. Habitat biodiversity refers to all of the different habitats that we find in an area. In the UK, we can find a relatively wide range of habitats. These include woodlands, meadows, sand dunes, and streams. So we would say that the UK has a rich habitat biodiversity. Now, each habitat will support a range of different species of plants, animals, fungi, and microorganisms. So an area with a rich habitat biodiversity will also have a wide range of species. Regions such as the Arctic have a relatively small number of different habitats. We would say that these regions have a low habitat biodiversity. These regions will contain a smaller range of species than we'd find in a region with a rich habitat biodiversity. OK, now the species biodiversity tells us about the species living in a certain area. Species biodiversity has two parts. The species richness counts the number of different species present. I'm showing you here five species of animals that are found in UK woodlands. Now, we can also find these species in farmlands, in hedgerows around fields. So because woods and farmlands may have a similar variety of different species, they may have a similar species richness. However, the population sizes of these species will not be the same between a wood and a farm. A wood may contain a relatively large number of each species, with no single species dominating. On the other hand, a farm is designed to support a very large population of a small number of species. For example, a farm could have several hundred cows, or fields containing millions of wheat plants, whereas there may only be a small number of bullfinches and hedgehogs. Now, the species evenness compares how many individuals of each species there are in a community. So, a woodland and farm can share a similar species richness. But because the populations of each species are more balanced in a woodland, the woodland will have a much greater species evenness. OK, now genetic biodiversity considers the variety of genes and alleles within a species. And I should point out that we'll be looking at how to calculate genetic biodiversity in a later video. Humans have around 22,000 genes. Some species have fewer genes, such as the fruit fly with around 15,000. And some species have more, for example, rice with around 45,000 genes. Also, many genes have different versions called alleles. So, the genetic biodiversity of a species depends on the different genes and alleles present. We can see this with different breeds, for example, these breeds of cats. The alleles present in different breeds lead to different phenotypes. Now, genetic biodiversity is very important for the survival of a species. Species with a greater level of genetic biodiversity can better adapt to environmental change. Also, if the species faces a new pathogen, having a greater variety of genes and alleles makes it more likely that some individuals of the species will survive. OK, so hopefully now you can describe what's meant by biodiversity. 